record-setting pace of Ricky Carmichael was bogged down in the mud and mayhem at Bud's Creek. As Talon Bolin picked up his very first 125 career win, narrowing the points lead. In the 250s, Ezra Lusk would see his brief lead evaporate, clearing away for his Honda teammate Sebastian Tortelli to reclaim the advantage. Greg Albertine keeps his prediction and championship hopes alive, and Kevin Windham enters the title chase. AMA Motocross is next. Hello, everybody. Art Ekman along with David Bailey and Davey Coombs. It is hot and a humid day at the Red Bud Track and Trail of Buchanan, Michigan, for our sixth round of AMA Motocross. The 125s are getting ready at the gate. Kelly Smith, who led much of the second moto at Bud's Creek, and here is Talon Volan, second in the points behind the great Ricky Carmichael. There's Pro Circuit's Nathan Ramsey. Ramsey looking to get on track here at midseason. And the three-time arena cross champion, Buddy Antonez. But the Carmichael watches on. Ricky Carmichael's mission to become the winningest 125 rider of all time. You see his points lead over Talon Volan here. Brock Sellards in third with Brandis and Johnson in the top five. Our compatriot, Davey Combs, is down at the gate. Davey. Well, Art and David, I don't know how hot it is where you guys are sitting, but down here in front of the starting gate for the first 125 moto at Red Bud, it's really hot. I'd say the first hot race of the year. Kind of a wild card thrown in the 125 mix here. The guy right behind me, Mike Brown, just back over from Europe. He's been racing on the 125 GP circuit. Top three right now. He's been riding 45-minute motos, so in this hot weather, Cutting it down to 30 minutes plus two laps, he might have an advantage over the locals and the regulars on the 125 National Circuit. Good to see Mike back as we take a look at the track map. Lots of sand on this one this year. The track's in the best shape I've ever seen. The ski jump right there, right off the start, very exciting. But the section I really want to take a look at is over on the right of your screen. The Rocco's Leap heading up the hill. These guys are jumping 70 feet in the air. Probably 160 feet up through there if you jump all three. This is what it looks like from the rider's point of view. Wide open to the approach. That's only going for the double, but you would land right about there if you were to triple it. And you got to deal with all these ruts getting into the corner. One of the most challenging sections on the racetrack. Portelli says it's the biggest double, triple he's ever jumped in a race. And let's take a look now at the starting grid. All 40 riders as Brandis and Casey Lytle also in the group along with Ricky Carmichael and Talon Bull, and then Brock Sellers, who's third in points, and Nathan Ramsey, one of the 125 Supercross champions. Taking a look down the order, Michael Craig, number 16 on this list, his first race back in some time. He's on a Kawasaki this time. And look at number 26, David Pingree, after breaking his shoulder at Hangtown, has a nasty knot on the top of that right shoulder, but he's back with a smile, not yet in top physical condition, but he's game as the 125s now are starting to rev things up down at the gate. Chad Watts, RC's mechanic, leaning over, giving him last second instructions as our first photo is just about set to get underway. Sign is sideways. Carmichael's all the way to the inside. It's a left-hand first corner. And a dirt start, David Bailey. No cement platform to take off now as RC's right next to Nick Way leans the shoulder in. And uh, Ricky Carmichael with a very good inside position. But it's Buddy Antonez taking the early lead. Number 100 is Fonseca. There's our C to the outside. Whoa, does he gun it around that berm. You had to be careful not to leave the door too wide open. All those riders coming in underneath him, but still a top three for the beginning right off that ski jump. Antonez and Fonseca flat out side by side. Here comes Carmichael. Oh, he goes right in between the two. What a move by RC now, taking on Ernesto Fonseca for the lead. Didn't even have his blinker on. Just split <laughs> those guys, went to the inside. Carmichael to the inside. But here comes Fonseca, reestablishing the lead. One of Ernesto's finest starts on the season. Carmichael to the outside once again. Feels confident on the outside, David. He just rides anywhere he wants. Look at that. He just sits down in the air, puts his leg out, so he's already got the corner partially made before the bike even hits the ground. Always thinking ahead and attacking. Right now, Fonseca can feel him all over the back. 
on the FMF Honda. Talon Bolin moving past Antonez into third. You see the cropping of three bikes right there with RC in second place. Carmichael pursuing Fonseca. You have the feeling it's just a matter of time. Back end of RC's bike flares out, but it doesn't bother him at all. And Fonseca goes down, making it easy for Carmichael. But he's right back up again. That's what happens. He was just bothering Fonseca so much, putting so much pressure on him. Forced him in a little bit of a mistake there. That's when you want to put the pressure on somebody in the opening lap, and they haven't really gotten into the groove yet. Carmichael seems to be always in the groove, and he just takes advantage of other people's weaknesses. Carmichael, this heat and humidity doesn't bother him as much as it might some. As he works out in northern Florida all the time, it's Ricky Carmichael, Talon Bolin, Ernesto Fonseca, Buddy Antonez, and Danny Smith, our top five. We'll be back with more 125 action from Red Bud in a moment. AMA Motocross is brought to you by Honda Motorcycles and the 1999 Honda Race Team. Honda, ride red. Welcome back to Red Bud, our first 125 photo of the day, and Ricky Carmichael has taken the lead. Talon Bolin has now moved into second place. Talon will give him a challenge. He goes wide and way down below. Trying to set him up, do something a little different, keep Ricky guessing. If you follow somebody, they don't get worried because they're going, well, how's he going to pass me if he's taking the same line? But if he starts riding around different places, the crowd gets into it and starts thinking about them a little more. Lots of roost on the corners on this track, as we'll see it really run up big time, taking another look now at the pass. Watch right here. This is the berm that he should follow, but his wheel's going to get out of this soft stuff. He drifts over the berm right there, gets over the berm. Nothing he can do about it. Ernesto getting right back up is in fourth place right now as Ricky Carmichael and Talon Bolden out front in our 125 opening moto. A little bobble right there by Talon, but he's still charging as hard as he can. The main thing I think for him here is to stay in contact. It's a, it's a big head game right now for Ricky to try to pull away and send a message back there to Bolin. But if he can hang with him throughout this race, he'll be worried in the, the remaining you know, last three or four laps, especially when they get into lap riders. There's Ernesto Fonseca, who passed Danny Smith to move into third while we'll be watching uh, Carmichael and Bolin go at it. Danny Smith. One of his better rides so far here with the opening moto. Off to a pretty good start. That always helps. You see the leaders going back the other way, already heading up Larocco's leap. 125 don't quite have the power to get a run up this triple. They double it. Still a lot of air time. I mean, about seven or eight years ago, that was a big jump there, just the double. Now they clear the whole thing. Larocco, who lives in South Bend, Indiana. It's understandable why they should uh, name such a feature after him. Only a few miles away from this track. Signs all around, LaRocco for president. Nice when you got that kind of reception. Makes you want to put out a little extra effort. Of course, Mike LaRocco will be coming up in the next moto with the 250s. Right now, moto number one of the 125s. And we've got the battle going on for third, fourth, and fifth. The Primal Suzuki in the fifth spot is David Pingree, followed by Mike Brown in sixth spot. And a good shot of Mike. Fast section right there, that's where the start comes in, that's where they get the signal from the mechanics. So much sand on this racetrack now, it's starting to form a little bit more of a one-line situation, and sure it'll get rougher as the day goes on. Pingree struggling right there, trying to get through the rush to see the little bit better drive that Brown had through there. Pingree out for four races, breaking that shoulder at Hangtown, and here comes Mike Brown to the inside. Oh, close. Mike Brown makes the pass in the fifth. He didn't want to take any chances there. He went all the way out into the line. No contact, though. No, nope. he was nice about it, but he went out there and made sure he didn't have any way to retaliate. Over the big triple there. They make this big banked right-hand corner, and then they got the double-double. Watch what happens here. Brown the inside. Carmichael and Bolin have been using these two lines. You got three, four lines. All of those are great lines you could take. He's like, nope, I'll just use Pingree for a berm. <laughs> Actually, it was clean, no contact, but he did go all the way to the outside and make sure he could make that pass. Danny Smith trying to pick up on Ernesto Fonseca now in the battle for third. Oh, I love this track today. 
Ernesto getting stronger and stronger in the outdoors. Of course, we've mentioned many times that his success in Supercross uh, was immediate, but uh, he's more used to the smaller tracks in Costa Rica than these large outdoor facilities. Behind Danny Smith, of course, is Mike Brown. He's hoping to race four more races here in the United States in between his GP obligation. We talked with him earlier. At the beginning of the year, uh, Patrick Connection, I asked him to help me with the suspension in Europe because I've never been over testing with him. And uh, I did a little bit of testing here with, with the Factory Connection before I went over there. And then he sent the settings over to my team. And he asked me if I did any races this year over here. Could I ride for his under his tent? And I was more than happy to do that. You know, it's a good team. and. Um, yeah, I just kept talking with him the whole time, and um, yeah, everything just worked out good. Mike Brown expected to sign next week for another year in Europe, and that would give him one more year and get his 125 Supercross eligibility back if he wanted to come back to the States as a support 125 rider like Talon Bolin has done. Ernesto Fonseca and Mike Brown against the blue sky coming off the big jump. It doesn't look nearly as hot and humid on the TV screen as it is. Don't let it fool you. It's, imagine having on all that gear. What you really notice it is when you get to a slow corner. You don't have that wind, that breeze anymore from moving down the track the way these guys are right now. That's actually cool right there when they jump through the air, but as soon as you slow down, all that heat catches up with you. We're looking at our leader, Ricky Carmichael. Talon Bolin still close, but looks like Ricky is inching away as this race goes on. This is where Ricky has really matured. He realized you have to be patient. You're only going to get a few inches a lap versus seconds like you would have expected a couple of years ago and made a big mistake trying to pull away. No surprise, Ricky Carmichael is our leader and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Red Bud. The battle for fourth is on. Mike Brown to the inside on Danny Smith. Mike Brown moves into fourth. Danny trying to hold in there. The factory connection Honda versus the FMF Honda. Danny tried to retaliate, square him back off, just didn't quite have enough. Brown's so aggressive. I think it goes back to what Davey said on the starting line. He's got so much confidence in his ability to be strong and basically sprint this whole 30-minute moto. Nice to know that you got the energy to go the distance. He can afford to be more aggressive and take a few more risks out there. Mike Brown's mechanic, Randy Richardson. And Davey Coombs is with him now. First of all, welcome to the pits of an AMA Pro National. Your rider, Mike Brown, making a lot of moves here early on. He's gone way up to fourth, but what happened on that start? I don't really know. I was running over, didn't get to see a jump on it, uh, see his jump. Um, he's going to work. He's used to a lot longer motos than these guys are. Nobody here is stronger than Mike Brown, and I hope to see good results out of it. How's it feel working with the Factory Connection team for the first time? I tell you what, it's great to work with them, and it's an honor to work with Mike Brown, that's for sure. Those guys over there, LaRocco, Paul, Ziggy, they've all been great, and welcomed us all in, and uh, we're glad to be under their tent, that's for sure. All right, well, good luck. We hope to see you on the podium. Thanks. Me too. Mike Brown chasing Ernesto Fonseca. Listen to those bikes flat out through there. And it looks easy. This looks like a straightaway, but you got to line up in that rut perfect. Let's check in with Mr. Racer X, Davey Coles. Hey, one thing to keep in mind about this battle between Mike Brown and Ernesto Fonseca, those guys might be going after the same job next year. The word on the street is that Fonseca is getting a lot of consideration from factory Honda. As for Mike Brown, he says he's happy in Europe. Surely he is. However, you know, if Honda came calling, he'd come back to America in a hurry. So kind of a little pride out there. That would be interesting. They'd be calling them the Red Raiders instead of the Red Riders here pretty soon. <laughs> they definitely got a lock on the 250 class with the, with the talent they have. And you imagine putting Fonseca and turning him into a dominating 125 rider. With it. As young as he is, he could come along and do what Lampson did. Casey Johnson, Brandis on the freight train. And at the caboose side of that freight train is number 25, Nathan Ramsey, hoping to move up. He's in decent position right now. He's had some tough times this year in the outdoors. Starts have been a big problem for him. And there's so much talent in this class. I mean, all these guys are running about the same pace. And if you're running at the same pace, how are you going to move past them? Nick Way, number 23, wants to make a move now on David Pingree. Opposite sides of the racetrack, down the inside. That's how you set up a pass anyway. You gotta keep the guy guessing a little bit, try not to follow. Stay out of that roost. 
Trying to make something happen. There he goes to the outside again to get a run at these whoops. Casey Johnson cutting to the inside. Way leaving the door open. Well, he had a good idea by going out there, but you got to keep track of who's behind you. Looks like he had the inside line there. And Casey shutting the door on him, preventing him from coming back as we go back to our leader, Ricky Carmichael, who has checked out now on Talon Bullet. Hear him get on that power as soon as the bike entered the berm. As soon as the wheels were even set in that berm, he's already on the power, working the clutch, keeping that drive. It's just forward momentum all the time. Good lines, aggressive riding. Eventually, he's going to pull away from somebody that's making a mistake here and there. That's what's been happening with Bolin. He's running about the same pace, but every once in a while, he'll make a couple of mistakes a lap, lose a little bit of time, and he can never make that back up. Off the ski jump, David Pingree in sixth spot. Casey Johnson, number 16, Yamaha Troy in seventh. Pingree's looking pretty good for just getting back on the track, David. He's looking very good. Whether he can hold off Casey Johnson's another matter as he looks over there and Casey very determined making the outside pass try. He had to work for that. Pingree didn't let him off the hook easy. Over the triple, pulls off the tearaway. Clear vision now, he'll be able to focus up the track. But the leaders are gone. The start, it all comes back to that. Everybody wants to get the start, but there's only room for a few. Now Nick Way, native uh, of Michigan, trying to make a move on Pingree as we check out the second place rider, Talon Bola, number 711. Got through that corner, got nice and smooth. You know, David, those who thought that Volan's wild style of riding would result in a lot of crashes this year have to reassess themselves. Uh, he looks like he's pretty wild when he's when you look at him riding, but he's had a podium at every event. He has been consistent, and I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'm surprised that he is this close to Carmichael making a series out of this to this point uh, this year. I just I thought he would be fast here and there. I was impressed with the way he caught and passed Carmichael at the opening round. But I didn't think it was going to last, and he is here to stay. Carmichael makes any kind of mistake or gets hurt during the week practicing, this title will belong to Bolin. Bolin had a slide out there at uh, Glen Helen, but he kept, kept his motor running for second place finish in that moto. That's the only crash this year. We'll be right back with more 125 action. We're back at Redbud Track and Trail in Buchanan, Michigan, a hot and humid day in the Midwest. As Ricky Carmichael continues to lead, but Talon Bolin in second place. We're looking back at Ernesto Fonseca. He's in third place. This would be his best moto finish if he could hold this position. Previously, he's had two motos where he finished in fifth spot. So this is very encouraging for the 125 East Supercross champion. And it comes back to the start, remember? He was right up front. He had a little mistake right here in this corner coming up in the first lap, but still he's been able to rebound nice. Can he hold off the veteran Mike Brown? Mike Brown makes the pass on the inside. Something about that corner that just doesn't agree with Ernesto. That time he went wide, probably didn't realize that Brown was in there coming in that hot. Brown trying to uh, cut him off on that corner. And Brown going wide there surprises me. Giving Ernesto the chance to come right back in a similar move. These guys aren't looking in their mirrors very really well. You just don't go to the outside when you got somebody charging behind you. Ernesto tried to sneak a wheel to the inside there, but Brown keeping possession, looks back on the leap. Even if it's a slower line, you still want to protect the inside. You don't want to give somebody the opportunity to sense a a weakness to be able to get in there and steal a position back. Taking There's, another look at the pass. Yeah, Ernesto comes into the corner. Right there, he should have just gone to the inside. No reason why he should have gone to the outside there. He lost the position. I understand that maybe that was more comfortable in that line. Maybe that works better every lap when he's by himself, but not when you got somebody breathing down your throat. The outdoors nationals is not a matter of comfort. Jeremy McGrath remember the year he won the championship, the 250 championship, said, I just had to learn to just blast through those ruts. Here comes Ernesto right back again, recapturing third place. This is the only battle within the war, and that's for third place. Ernesto Fonseca 
back in the position where he wanted to be. Well, Brown hugged that corner before the ski jump so tight, he got in there getting all the mud where they watered the track heavily in practice. Fonseca got him back, but knowing the conditioning that Brown has under his belt, maybe this isn't over yet. Time running out as Mike Brown in fourth spot. He's kind of having a, I don't know, it's his last quarter of a lap or so, he looks like he's backed off the pace, telling his, the way he's riding. Here's our leader on the white flag lap, Ricky Carmichael. Ricky has won the three of the last four motos on this track, and it looks like he's pretty close to making it four out of five. That'll feel good. Something very bizarre would have to happen for him not to accomplish that feat as he looks back, checking out Mike Craig, number 19, of whom he's lapped. Just easily going over the double. Looking around a little bit, keeping tabs, making sure Bolin isn't making some last ditch effort coming out of nowhere. He can do that. Saving energy right now. It's already fast forwarding to the second moto. Thinking about doing this all over again, but it pretty much comes down to the start. You know, talking about shape, this guy is in terrific shape. He has to be to do the things he does, to attack the track, to go as hard as he does in the first lap, knowing he's still got over 30 minutes to go. A leisurely ride toward the checkered flag. Good thing, gave him time to get the checkers out. <laughs> Ricky Carmichael takes our first photo of 125 action from Red Bud. Something must have happened to Mike Brown as he ends up in fifth. Casey Johnson beating him for fourth spot. But our winner is Ricky Carmichael. Let's go down to Davey Coombs, who's with RC. Ricky, another good start. Looking good, town bowling right on you, but he made one mistake, and bang, you're gone. Yeah, I uh, almost messed up too back there, uh, like the second lap, and hit a big old kicker bump, and uh, almost sent me over the bars. But uh, my Kawasaki got me out front, and uh, you know, I'll tell you what, I, I just rode my own race, and uh, he made a mistake, and I pulled away and won the moto. What about the heat? Did it affect you? I mean, it's really hot here. Uh, no, not really. No, it's really humid, but uh, second moto should be a lot better. Second place was Talon Bolin, but this is the best ride of the year for number 100, Ernesto Fonseca. Let's go back to Davey. All right, Ernesto, congratulations. Your first podium in an outdoor national. Yeah, you know, it's a really tough race. I'm not so used to it, but uh, like I said early in the season, I'm going to work my way up, and uh, hopefully I can do it in the second moto. Good battle there with Mike Brown. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, Brown, he's a really, really good rider, and uh, I just uh, was trying my best, and uh, I knew that uh, he was a little tired, at least, because I was really tired, but uh, I just want to thank Yamaha Troy, Factory Yamaha, Oakley, Sinus Al Alpine Stars, Bell Helmets, List Designs, Revenge, and everybody out there for uh, helping me out. Uh, my trainer, Corey Worf, and uh, everybody. Hey, I got to tell you, ever since you started working with Corey, man, you're getting strong. That's the main thing, you know. Uh, I, uh, I want to try to get stronger every weekend and uh, be up, up here more often. Welcome back, Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs from Buchanan, Michigan, as the 125s are getting set for their second moto of the day. Talon Bolin coming in second place to Ricky Carmichael in that first moto. Can he take advantage of him now and win an overall here at Red Bud? Question here for the second moto, how about that heat and humidity? How will it affect the riders as we take another look at the track? Well, we've already seen how sandy and the perfect conditions. We showed you LaRocco's leap over on the right in the first uh, hour. You saw the 250s getting all that air time. But let's take a look at the ski jump. This is right off the start. They make a left, a right, another left from the rider's point of view. This is the approach. Getting up into third gear, just into fourth. See that pile of mud? Adding that distraction. Let's go down to Davey again at the starting line. Guys, I wouldn't believe I'd be saying this, but it's somehow actually gotten hotter here before the start of the second 125 moto. They did a lot of grooming on the track. I think the heat plays into Carmichael's hands, being from Florida, but the fact they watered it goes against him. Ricky's had some problems on early laps of races where they watered the track. That might be the best of talent bowling these other guys got. Well, today makes that mud flow at Butts Creek almost seem blissful. <laughs> I don't know. I think Carmichael's pretty used to the heat. If you live back east, you're used to humidity and hot weather. Carmichael prides himself on his conditioning. If he gets a start, the way he's riding that first moto, it's going to be tough. 
Okay, the 32nd board is down. We're ready to go for our second 125 moto of the afternoon. Can someone put a challenge to Ricky Carmichael? Nick Way in good position. So is Ricky Carmichael, though. Nick Way gets the whole shot. There's Carmichael right behind him. Another great start for Fonseca as well. Mike Brown up in there in the top five, it looks like. Paul Curry, number 46, a surprise in third place. That scares me, the way they go down the right side of that straightaway and they got to dodge the tree at 50 miles an hour. Nick Way after a sixth place in the first photo. Oh, look at Ricky Carmichael. He picked off a hay bale, it looked like, a little bit. Symbolic of his intensity in that opening lap, already going for the pass. Makes it to the inside, Nick Way, his pro circuit teammate, all of a sudden in second place. So Ricky Carmichael wasting fewer precious seconds in this moto than he did in the first, is out and running in first place. I just don't think he wants to get dirty. That, that could be part of it. I don't know, Talon Mullen should have used some of that money he wanted Bud's Creek to get the water truck guy out here and just get a massive mud slide. It was a little bit muddy in practice here and there, but the track has really worked up nice. It's one line here and there, but right here are two lines. Plenty of place to get around. Carmichael's found his way to the front both times. Doesn't have to work that far around, but check out this pass again. Gets up there, stays on that off-camber, gets the berm, hooks up perfect. Nick Way's going, ah, I should have thought of that. Boy, you have to keep your power up on that off cam, don't you? As long as you're in that rut, you can get right back on the power. If the rear wheel slides over and you're down. Nick Way in second place. He's still looking for the best finish of the year. And Talon Bolin right there in third. That's what I'm talking about. There's plenty of lines getting into that corner, down the inside, the outside, and the middle. There's one burn, but there's plenty of lines to get there. Number 49, Michael Brandis. He has one podium on the year, a third place at Mount Morris. Nick Way trying to stay with his teammate here. This reminds me of the season opener. Number Way rode strong. Stayed with Carmichael for a little while, but then it was RC just opening up a huge lead here. Way is learning a little bit in this opening lap. Yeah, Nick was ending up with two third places for a second overall in that opener at Glen Helen. He's going to probably have to start worrying a little bit about Boland and Brown coming up from behind. Brown, Brandis. As soon as you got to worry a bit, a little bit, protect your line, ride defensive, that allows Carmichael to get away. He knows that. That's why he goes for the passes early and tries to just disappear. We also got our first peek in that long shot of uh, Ron Cotta, who had an eighth in the first moto. He's in better position for his finest moto finish of the year. As he was out for three of the previous five races. He's had a tough year to kind of battle through his injury. That wrist has just been a real problem for him in the Supercross series. And I don't think we've seen what he can really do. On Seiko 100, Yamaha of Troy. Casey Johnson 16, Yamaha of Troy. All behind the primal Suzuki of Michael Brandis. And he just got down into that off camera, didn't waste any time. Two-wheel drift into the berm, hit it right back on the power. Over the triple there. Looking strong. You see how slick it's getting, getting into that corner now. The guy's getting a little fishtail going in. This is where the skill of motocross, your ability to, to adapt to the different conditions. Look at how much different it is now in the second moto. Bumpier into the corners, a lot drier and slicker this time. Fonseca with a lot of rebound. Carmichael, our leader, Way, Bolin, Brown, Brandis, Fonseca, and Johnson, our top seven. We'll be right back. We're back with 125 action from Red Bud Track and Trail, Buchanan, Michigan. Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs. Ricky Carmichael, here in the early going of the race, has taken over the lead and is just starting to take away with it. Talon Bolin trying to stick with him as best he can. Now, Talon really showing everybody, I think, that he's better than the rest. The young upstarts hoping to someday be the Jeremy McGrath, the Ezra Lessons, etc. There are a couple of notches behind the veteran Talon Bolin, who is a notch and a half maybe behind Ricky Carmichael. Frustrating place to be, because he's just pretty much stuck in second. Unless he has a phenomenal ride, he can expect to get around not in this particular moto, of course. There's Nick Way holding down second, but so far, you're right. 
and uh, I've been in that position before. And There's you try, Tower. You try so hard, you can't make up the difference. You're better than the rest, but you still can't catch the leader. And uh, but you know what I like about him? He just doesn't give up. He keeps trying. He charges the whole time, and he has a pretty good attitude. No matter what the outcome, he's always trying to think of a positive way to reflect on it and take it into the next week on maybe that'll be mine. Callan's one of those guys that likes to split the jerseys to get airflow through there, especially on hot, humid days like today. Look at him work through there. Nice timing that, that time. Kind of bounced into that second big roller and hopped all the way over the third one. Then you get a little bonus on the back side. He's going fast. The problem is his 125 class is everyone's going pretty fast. You get up front. So tough to make up time. And if you lose any by making a mistake, making that back up again is just about impossible. So that's what's so tough about beating Carmichael. He doesn't make any mistakes and he rides fast the whole time. Allen with a third place at Glen Helen, then two seconds, and then a third before his victory in breaking up this young man's string, taking a look at the Suzuki stopwatch. And the interval between first and seventh with Ricky Carmichael already through our picture. Got about a five second lead over his teammate now. Talon's really starting to close it up though on Nick Way and a big gap you can see back to fourth. A huge gap and there's Michael Brandis in fourth with Mike Brown in fifth. Ron Cotta in sixth and Brock Sellers in seventh. That's pretty impressive for Mike Brown to just show up and be running up front with these guys, Dyson. I think he's only going to get better as the series continues in the next races. He's able to ride and compete, and he's going to get more used to this pace, more used to the riders he's racing against. And if his starts are as, as uh, good as what he's gotten today, he might be able to sneak in a moto win somewhere. He's got that kind of resolve and experience. I'll never forget his first win in Washougal, 125 ranks, where he got the chance to uh, shave the facial hair off his mechanic. And to the inside, there's Stefan Roncata in the battle for fifth place. Mike Brown will have to take a back seat to Roncata, who's coming off that injured wrist. A little bit surprised Brown went all the way to the bottom there. He's not to realize Roncata was that close or just doesn't have that off-camera corner wire. Sometimes in a moto, you just can't get comfortable with your lines and you keep searching for something else. And that time, the outside just didn't pan out for Whoa! Oh, Mike Brown does a header. It's rough getting into that corner, and he got a little crooked, started swapping. It's right back up. There goes Sellards. You getting that loose stuff there inside? Another Brandis moves back a spot as well, so Ron Cotta, coming off that injury, starting to show us what, he's, what he can do. Ron Cotta in fourth place. His best positioning since coming back at Bud's Creek, where he got a 14th and an 8th place in the mud. Fast through there, got into that corner nice. That berm though, the berms change throughout the entire race and you see how they get a little hook at the end. Slows down all your momentum. Sometimes you gotta plan ahead for that. That's where Carmichael's really skilled. He'll get into a berm and know that, okay, about two more laps, this thing's gonna be ruined. What I need to do is cut out about five feet before the end of it, keep my momentum strong. Ron Cotta was able to race in the opener at Glen Helen before the injury, but had a 17th overall there. Very disappointing performance. And then he got hurt before Hangtown. Let's go down to Davey now, down to the mechanics area. Hey, one of the things that makes Ricky Carmichael so tough to beat in the 125 class, he uses every inch of the track. Check out this line as he comes down the mechanics area. Carmichael up on the grass, trying to stay out of the loamy stuff. He's got a big lead, but he charges every lap, every corner. That guy's a true champion. Part of that's just having fun out there. He's just going around using all, everything he can, probably just trying to dazzle the fans a little bit. Plus, it is a great line. It sets him up perfect for the right-hander that he's approaching. RC has won three of the last four motos at this track. He was victorious last year and took a second place in 97. Look at the way he comes from the outside, works his way back to the inside, up high. That's where he made the pass for the lead. And you're right, Art. His lines are dialed in all the way around this track. So we'll likely see the battles for second, third, fourth, and fifth when we come back. In case you just joined us, 
This is the second 125 moto of the day. Ricky Carmichael, after winning the first one, is way out in front now in the second one. Nick Way in second, and he is being hounded by number 711, Talon Bullen. Off the ski jump, check out this line all the way on the outside. Right, right into the shadows there next to that tree. It makes me nervous every time. I don't. I, I would not like going that close. Talon Mullins' win at Bud's Creek in the last event was his first in 125 national action. Well, I'm very happy coming off a win here, and you know, I uh, win last week, and I'd like to do it again here. Get a little bit of more mon uh, momentum in my favor, and I really felt that the time was coming. You know, I, I was a little bit bummed out at South with Ricky Road really strong there, and I was expecting them and myself to beat him there. And, I didn't really have anything for him there, and I was, I was kind of bummed during the week, but I've been working so hard, and my discipline's been working so good for me, and when I ride the bike, I was riding so well, I said to myself, just keep the same work ethic going, and it's going to pay off, and sure enough, the next week, next thing I find myself 13 points behind him, which is how much I was behind him after the very first race, so after five races, I'm right there, and this will be the halfway point today, so I hope to, to get a little bit more on him. Well, it's going to take a minor miracle if he's going to get more on it right now as Talon Volan's got his hands full with Nick Way. Volan cuts to the inside on Way, a pro circuit rider in green, FMF rider in red. Look how hard Talon tried. I mean, he had a jam on the brakes right there to keep him running into the back of him. That's aggressive. Got an inside line down here. Oh, just shot by him. What happened to Way? He just hesitated slightly. I didn't think there was enough room. Looked like he was standing still. He looked over before the corner just a little bit, like he, he knew he was in the wrong line, but I still didn't think Talon had enough room to squeeze through there. Talon Bolin in second place, and if Ricky Carmichael should go down or have some problems, we might have an interesting situation. Yeah, see, Nick just looked over slightly, and Talon, <laughs> there was inches between his bike and Nick Way's foot. I think that was heads up by Nick, knowing that he was coming, and it, uh, he must have sensed it to just stay slightly out of the way so neither one of them went down. This is the sixth race of the season, two motos each race, of course, and this might be the fifth time this year that Bowen has placed in second place behind Ricky Carmichael. That's gonna get old. I think all it's gonna do is just motivate him more. I mean, you can see how bad he wants it. He reminds me of Albertine in the 250 class. He just wants it so much, he's working hard. It's all you ever hear out of his, uh, you know, after his uh, post-race interviews, how hard he's working, and eventually it's gonna pay off. It's gotta be his week coming up, and you know, eventually it will. Good shot of Ron Cotta. Definitely his best race of the year in the outdoor situation. Too bad he's had the injuries he's had because uh, he kind of bursted onto the scene and looked really strong and then injuries sort of been plaguing him ever since. Doesn't really get a chance to ride at 100% very often. And even to ride at 80% or whatever he's at right now, he's looking pretty sharp. Here's Buddy Antonez and uh, he's riding another fine race here today. Buddy's finest hour in the outdoors came in the last event where he took a third Overall, after a five and four finish in the two motos, his primal Suzuki contract has him traveling to the hinterlands of America for 68 main events in arena cross and then this rigorous 125 motocross series. Quite a contrast. I'm in really good shape right now and working really hard every week to uh, come out here and, and put in some good rides in these 125 outdoor nationals and uh, show these kids I can still get up there and race with them. No one is more serious about training and working on his craft. For Buddy, it's no longer kid stuff. He's 26 and has a family to feed. Right now, at my, my point in the career, my family does come first. And uh, if it's a matter of staying in an arena cross to make the more money, then I'm for sure going to do that. Because uh, you know I've, I've made uh, my career out of racing motorcycles, and I've made a living. And that's what I need to continue doing as long as I can for my family. After teaming with Jeremy McGrath on the Peak Performance 125 support team, the next step, a Cush Factory 250 ride, never came. It was fun racing with Jeremy uh, back then, and, and I had some strong rides. And, and to finish second to Jeremy McGrath in the Supercross Series, I didn't think it was all that bad. Yeah, you know, I had to, I had to hit, the, hit the pavement and uh, do the privateer thing. Uh, I think it's made me a better person and made me accept everything I have 
now and uh, really take it all in for what it's worth. Since those days, nothing but good has come Buddy's way. Three consecutive arena cross titles has made him a household name at the grassroots of the sport. Or like uh, Jeremy McGrath has done in Supercross. I would love to have that name, like you say, in an arena cross. And if people think about arena cross, they think about me. You know, if that's my one thing I'm going to do in the sport, I want to take advantage of it. So. Uh, that's my motivation now, is just to go out there and, and just do as much winning as possible. One of the nice guys on the tour, Brock Sellers, now hounding Michael Brandis for fifth place. Cuts to the inside. Sellers trying to hold on to that advantage. That's how you square a corner. And right there, it paid off with a pass. Well, he just got in there, backed it in, got out on the inside. Shorter line down the straightaway, perfect. We'll be right back. Hope you can see one of the motocrosses in person coming up in your area. For this week's Suzuki flashback, we highlight the 1990 125 National at Redbud. The first moto of race action saw number 22, Jean-Michel Bale, passing number 60, the butt man, Buddy Antonez. The Frenchman Bale would pull out and take the first moto win on a hot day for riders and the fans. Number four Suzuki mounted Guy Cooper went down in Moto 1. Here he's passed by Steve Lampson. Cooper had to fight back for a podium spot. But in Moto 2, it was a better ride for Cooper getting out to an early lead. Number one Mike Kudrowski, the 1989-125 national champ, would pass Bale and Antonez for second place in the final Moto of the day. Cooper's second Moto win would give him his second overall victory of the year. On way to five victories, and the 1990-125 championship by one point over Kudrowski. Back to the action now. Matt Walker and Nathan Ramsey battling it out for sixth spot. Walker number 80, the privateer who's shown great speed. He's had a tremendous amateur career before turning professional. Right now trying to hold off the 125 West Coast Supercross champion. Just lapping Jason McCormick. Boy, his bad luck just continues to mount. Ramsey makes the easy move on Matt Walker, a little bit more aggressive around the left-hand sweeper down to the inside line for the off-camber. You know, I think Matt's been benefiting from having the opportunity to ride with Carmichael a little bit and Lusk down there in Florida. Anytime you can spend some time with the guys that are doing it all right, got the momentum learned so much and you can see the wind right now is picked up and starting to push those guys when they get up in the air they have to actually use a little body English jump into the wind so when it blows the front end they land straight actually that breeze is a godsend on this hot and humid day at Red Bud as we take a look at our leader in the final lap of action Ricky Carmichael is on his way now of winning five of the six events so far this year ten motos Victorious in 12 tries. That's a great record. <laughs> I had one year like that on the 500 class. And, it, you know, it's a great feeling, but you still can't relax. Because he's got Bowling back there close enough in the points that if he makes a mistake during the week or has a problem with his motorcycle and doesn't get a moto finish, he's got a fight on his hands. So he's still got to press forward, keep doing what's gotten him here. The crowd giving him his due as he takes his final lap. <laughs> he has a good time on the last lap. He's had to do that 10 times this year. Go out there and pretty much just take a victory lap. Slows down to make sure he gets across the finish line. And the checkered flag is waiting for him. Ricky Carmichael passes Lampson as the second winningest 125 rider in national history. He now has 21 career victories. He's got six races to win five to break Barnett's 25 win record. Carmichael wins it, let's go down to Davey. Rick, another tough moto, but you were in second place for what? 50 yards, took off, another win. Yeah, I got by Nick on that off camber back there and uh, pulled away, man. I'll tell you what, I felt great that time. Didn't get tired. I don't know, I got tired the first moto, then the second moto, I was good. It happened to me this week practicing, I got tired the first moto, I'm like, what's the deal? And the second moto, I tell you what, I got a good start and uh, pulled away. My Kawasaki was running great. Fox clothes, Oakley, my mechanic, Chad Watts. Bell helmets, Alpine Star, Troy Lee Designs.
I know last week Talon Bowen made up a handful of points on you and that DNF in the mud, but way to respond. You got a second moto victory in the mud at Butts Creek. You come out here, solid 1-1, 22nd leads. You got to feel good about title number three. Uh, I feel good, you know. Uh, you know, last year I had a, uh, a bad race and then won six nationals after that. So uh, I'm going to try to win the rest of them here on out. All right, so far so good. Good job, Rick. Thanks, Davey. Thanks a lot. So Ricky Carmichael pulls off another sweep. Talent Bolin, 2-2. Two -two. Nick Way, that's his second podium of the year. It's Stefan Roncana, his best finish. Let's go back to Davey. Town, what a tough afternoon, but I got to tell you, you rode strong all day, two solid second place finishes, still right there for the championship. Yeah, you know, I'm happy. I mean, I'm really happy. I didn't, I mean, Ricky just clearly beat me today, but I didn't beat myself. The South got his bum because I beat myself. I did my best. I got second today. Can't be disappointed with that when you give it 100% and you get your best result, and that's what I could do today. So we just go about working on our bike a little bit more, a little bit more training, and just keep pushing on, you know. I don't give up. I only lost six points today, and that's good because he was really on the bubble today. As the summer goes on, we're going to get more hot races like this. But now you got one under your belt. You know you're solid the whole way. Got to feel good about that. Yeah, I think we just got a few things we need to work on and test and get myself a little bit more tuned in, you know. Um, we're just halfway now. It's, what, I think I'm 16 or 18 points down. And that's not bad, you know. We got a lot of races left, mud races, more hot races, everything. So I'm looking forward to the rest of the season and just trying to pick it up every time. I mean. Ricky doesn't become the champion two times because he's slow. I didn't really know how his conditioning was coming into this race, but obviously it's very good, so I just have to step it up myself. Taking a look at the Suzuki top five point standings, uh, the 19-point lead by Carmichael does not mirror his dominance, of course, but Bullen is right there ready in case something